Welcome back to the Young Shakespeare podcast. Today, I have the privilege of being joined by varsity football stars over at Walpole High School, Andrew Falzone and Corey Kilroy. Guys, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having us. Big win uh, this past uh, Friday, was it, against Norwood, uh, 32 to 10. Tell me a little bit about that. It was uh, yesterday on Saturday. Um, Norwood, um, we didn't know a lot about them because they haven't we haven't played them in the past few years since they left our um, league. So we heard they were a pretty good team and better than um, previous years. So we obviously prepared how we usually do. And um, the offense was going well, defense was going well, and we played a strong game. And um, we're fortunate enough to beat them. Yeah, it was definitely fun. Um, you know, me and Corey grew up playing together. We've been playing together since second grade. So, and we've always been playing Norwood. So to get another crack at Norwood, it was awesome. Yeah, that's what's interesting. It's just a few years ago, as you guys alluded to, they moved to the TVL large. But you would you recognize any of the faces just from playing those guys in youth football or Pop Warner? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I played hockey with a couple of those kids. Um, they're all, you know, familiar faces. What, what kind of challenges did Norwood pose to you guys? What was sort of their strength as a team, and what did you have to look out for? They were um, strong kids, definitely a tough D-line, hard hitters. Um, but the secondary was kind of their weaker point, so we really had to work on our passing game and move the ball around. Yeah, they're definitely, they're definitely a good team. Um, defensively, uh, their running backs were phenomenal. Um, they, they were fast, quick, and strong. So we had to, you know, make that our main focal point to try and stop their run game. And then the next question I'd love to know about the inverse. What do you think makes Walpole a tricky opponent for other people to face? What is sort of your strength as a team? You know, where do you, where do you win your games at? I think we're just very versatile. Um, we can throw the ball if we need to, or we can run the ball if we need to. Um, it and just varies. A lot, of, lots of heart. Um, team doesn't like to give up we play to the final whistle mm -hmm. and it's just fun playing with everyone on, on our team always have a good time tell me a little bit about the Bay State League um obviously a tough league there's a lot of football towns tell me a little bit about the landscape of the league and and who are some of the tougher teams uh it's it's definitely a strong league um we love playing in it just because we're getting such good competition all the time um so I want to say that there's a bunch of teams that are like, you know, either in division two, division three, is there any in one? There yeah, might... I think a couple yeah, in a division couple in one. one. Mm -hmm. So we're definitely getting um, a, ton, a bunch of different competition. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what would you guys say is the win you're most proud of this year? Um, I'd say maybe either Framingham or Brookline. Brookline only because we came off a three-game losing streak, so it was, it was great to finally get that um, first win back and kind of get the season back on track. Mm -hmm. And Framingham was another tough team, so that was a good game to get our first win of the year. Um, and Yeah, that definitely started the season off strong. Um, you know, just going in with high hopes and then coming out with a victory like that definitely set the expectation very high. One thing I was curious to ask you guys about is the Natick game, because it, I don't know if it would seem like it to you guys, but in a way it's a victory because Natick has been a really tough team with a lot of hype around them and um, a lot of big wins notched on their belt. Um, and you guys played them tight and you played them close 13 to seven, you know, do you guys take that as, um, as sort of a, a positive sign during the season or was that, or was that tough to swallow losing the Natick? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's always tough to lose, uh, especially in an overtime game like that. But um, no, the, we definitely had a lot of positive takeaways and a lot of negative takeaways, um, things that we needed to work on and things that we did great. Mm -hmm. What are you guys um, expecting going into Thanksgiving? How do you think this game will play out? Well, Weymouth is, um, we've played Weymouth a lot growing up and a few times in the past few years. And um, they've always been a, good team but a very beatable team we've heard that this year they're better than um better than they've been in the past so we're just gonna have to prepare like we usually do and go in with um a good attitude try and get the win right you touched on preparation there 
Um, Corey, for you especially, I'd love to hear what is the, you know, preparation of a quarterback going to a game? Are you watching a lot of film? Are you are you taking reps for, you know, expecting a certain defense that your scout team is going to emulate? How do you get ready for a big game? Yeah, it's usually just watching a lot of film um, um, for the teams that we're playing against and some of their um, games, seeing what defensive formations they line up in. And then during um, the week in practice, we run that same defense and uh, run plays against that defense and learn how to read the defense and what plays will be open and what will work. Mm -hmm. Same question to you, Andrew. How do you get ready for your unique position, you know, uh, as a running back and as a strong safety? Uh, it's it's just like Corey said, a lot of film. Um, getting the scout team prepared and ready, um, trying to learn their playbook just as well as ours and being able to know, you know, what plays they're coming, what plays they're running at us and being able to sniff it out. What uh, Bay State League teams have surprised you guys this year, whether it be, you know, being stronger than you thought or weaker than you thought once you got on the field and were able to start hitting? Uh, I think that um, Bay State League, like we were saying earlier, is just such a strong um, league. But I thought Wellesley, Wellesley was a very, very good team um, and basically all aspects of the game. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and do you guys think that there's any crossover between um, the other sports you guys play, you know, whether it's hockey, um, baseball, lacrosse, between football? Does, does football help you guys get ready? Is there any crossover between your other sports? Um, I definitely think so, just because it gets us, you know, varsity ready and varsity prepared. We have, you know, fall season being first. It gets us into the swing of things and, you know, being ready to go. Corey, how do you see the um, outlook for the baseball team at Walpole this year? I think we'll be good. Um, last year, we had a pretty young team, a few sophomores, a lot of juniors, and not a lot of seniors. So it was kind of a tough year. Lots of people playing varsity for the first time. And we made a pretty good run. Uh, we had a winning record. We have a really good coaching staff. So I think this year... Um, having team more used to things, more experienced will definitely be able to make a good run. Yeah, and that's something I don't know a ton about, sort of how last season worked. So could you break it down a little bit? Like through the COVID season, did you guys have a shorter season or was it later in the year than you're used to? How did, how did coronavirus affect the season? Yeah, so the season started later. It started, I think, either, um, I think it started in April, late April, uh, early June early May, I mean, and um, we definitely had less games than a normal season. And we were playing three times a week um, against some Bay State teams, some non-league teams. And we, um, your, how you did in the regular season um, affected your seeding in the bracket. And then um, it was a similar um, state tournament, like playoff, but not exactly the same. Right. And what position do you play in baseball? I'm a catcher. Okay. That's wow. That's, that's kind of a unique one. How would you describe that to people that don't have experience with baseball? Cause I know it's, you got to spend a lot of time sort of in that crouch position. Has that ever hurt? Does that ever hurt your knees? Um, um, it, as time goes on, the more I catch, yeah, like long-term, I actually suffered a knee injury later in the last season that, kind of um, wasn't terrible, but it just over time catching so many um, innings, my knees start to sort of wear down, I guess. So it's definitely a tough position, but um, I'm pretty used to it, I'd say. Right. And isn't the big thing, and excuse me, because I don't know a ton about baseball, but a big thing that you work on as catcher is trying to just as quickly as possible get it to second base, right? If someone's stealing, how do you, yeah. how do you work on improving that? And what are some of the the tricks that a normal person wouldn't know about? Um, fundamentals, mechanics, just working on the little things like receiving the ball, transferring it, throwing it down, and shoving good form and all that. I feel like football would definitely get you prepared for when someone's coming barreling into home plate, like you're not worried because you had, a, you know, you've had a bunch of fat kids running at you all football season trying to take your head off. Yeah, I mean, being able to play baseball and football definitely helps with like arm strength, um, range of motion, and just that same throwing the baseball, throwing the football.
And yeah, it definitely translates. Yeah. And Andrew, how about for you in um, lacrosse and hockey? How does, you know, does the toughness of football translate at all? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, hockey and lacrosse are, you know, high contact sports as well. So, um, but I think for, you know, to compare football to both of those sports for me personally, I think it's just using my legs constantly, making my legs stronger, you know, every time I'm running, skating or whatever it may be. Do you have to change up your haircut so that the flow matches the sport? Because I'd imagine when you're playing hockey, the flow needs to be a little bit longer and then lacrosse would be like the maximum amount of flow. You can need. <laughs> not really, not really. I keep it the same. Okay, okay. And so uh, how does the uh, season look for Walpole going in? Are you guys, have you been historically good at hockey? Are you looking to improve this year? How does it look? Yeah, definitely. We look good. We're very confident um, and excited. Uh, two years ago, before COVID hit, um, we made it all the way to state championship game. Um, and then that got taken away because of COVID. Mm. So, you know, we got a taste of that and we definitely want to, you know, be able to go back and try and repeat that. Is that, are you one of the teams, because I'd heard this about another program, did you have to split the state title? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, it's, well, it's interesting how you said it to me. I can't remember who said it the other way, but you, it sounds like you don't, you don't even consider it the full state title, like you. Like well, no, we do, well, we do. Okay. Um, it, it, it was just heartbreaking because Mm -hmm. we, we were all, you know, pumped up and ready to go. And then we get told that we can't play. Right. And who is the matchup? You, who, who did you guys have to play? Um, shoot. I want to say, I, you know, I forget off the top of my head right now. But yeah, I guess the, well, the follow up is really going to be, how did you guys feel about that game? Was that a game where you're like, oh, we're going to crush or was it going to be a tough one to win for you guys? How did the, what was the outlook like? Um, I, I'd say our team felt very confident. Um, we, we were, we came into the tournament, uh, being the underdogs, we had no respect as a team, as a unit. Um, and then, you know, we just kept proving and proving and proving and we felt like we could, you know, finish it off. Yeah. What made that year such a, a special team for Walpole? Who are some of the guys that were really important to that team and, and what was the play style like overall? Um, our play style was just, uh, work hard, work harder than the other guy. Uh, we, like I said, we didn't have a lot of respect, um, and we just, you know, tried to do everything in our power to, you know, say, kind of put it behind us and let that go and just say, we're going to play for ourselves and play for this program in this town and, you know, make stuff happen. Where wasn't the respect given? Was it Mike Flanagan's articles? Was it? <laughs> no, he, he was always awesome. He was always awesome. But, uh, no, we just felt like, you know, um, especially going into the tournament, like, oh, it's just Walpole. You know, just uh, it's just so like with the men the mentality from the other teams, kind of. Yeah, and just so, yeah, just around, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So the like the kind of the word on the street was just like, yeah, we're not worried about this one. Yeah, you know, Flanders there, there wasn't. So, yeah, we didn't feel like I'm we had much faith. Yeah, exactly. that he that he was positive on you guys, but um, I can't imagine I can't imagine Flano writing off a wall pull team. <laughs> Just oh a, no god no yeah he, he, was, no he was one of the ones yeah he, he'd come to our games make videos for us he was one of the ones that was definitely in our corner yeah it, it, it's so exciting too when his new videos come out even for a game you've been to or you're at you know what i mean like one of the medfield players was describing when he sees that tag on instagram he's like just super excited because he knows what's about to happen yeah no it's awesome we're, after every game we're always waiting for him to see you know what he put on it yeah Flano, he's a little bit of a mythical creature too, I like to say, because he kind of hangs <laughs> out in the end zone and then you're like, hey, who is that guy? And until you get to know him, you're not really sure what, what he's all about, but he does a million things because he writes like six articles a week and then he also works at Boston Lax and then he also makes those highlight videos which take like a few hours to make. Yeah, absolutely. So um, going back, um, just to really uh, pinpoint in on this because I'm curious, that... Um, you guys were, you know, underestimated. People were saying, you know, it's just Walpole, not a team to worry about. How did you guys overcome that? Obviously not taking any shit from anyone, but also just, you know, what were some of the key wins you guys had and, and what made the team such a strong hockey team, you know, play style wise? You know, it was definitely a while ago. Um, so it's a little, you know, I don't remember everything to 
detail, but I want to say one of the last games of the season. But no, so we actually, for the last four games of the season, we had to win out or be or go three and one. And uh, at that point, we were kind of just flipped the switch to playoff mode instantly. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, from there, we just built off one win, another win, another win. And then it kind of carried over into the playoffs. Like, like I said earlier, we're just going to play for ourselves, this town, this program, our coaches, and, you know, try and prove people wrong. So it sounds like you you didn't come in super highly ranked either. You barely you slipped into the playoffs. Yes, we did. Yeah, we did. We we just made it. Wow. Which was part which I think was part of the reason why, you know, everyone was like, oh, it's just Walpole, you know. That happens all the time with sports. You know, they see the lower seed and sometimes they'll underestimate those teams. Absolutely. And tell me a little bit about who are some of the important players to the Walpole hockey team this year? Who are guys that we should look out for on the ice? Um, our seniors, our senior captains, uh, Colin Burris, who's a defenseman. Uh, he's a very good player. Um, same with Jack Walsh and then, um, Declan Hunter as well. Those are our three captains. And we have for juniors, um, Jason Finkelstein and Matt Bancoli. Mm-hmm. I love when you're, when you're thinking of something, your eyes are going back and forth, almost like you're reading a script. <laughs> <laughs> well I'm just I'm just trying to recall I know I know there's nothing up there but you're like looking back and forth, like you're reading something uh but that's that's great to hear about those guys um and then tell me a little bit about last lacrosse season that was a whole different season it happened super late went to you know July for some teams um if you kept playing but how did how did that season go down for Walpole did you guys live up to expectations and and basically how was the season um, I mean I, I would say Every team's expectation from the start of the year is state championship. Um, and we came up short of that. Um, but we, we had a great team. Um, it was very fun. And uh, we lost to Conquer Carlisle, who I want to say ended up winning uh, the title. Yeah. So. yeah, I believe they did. Um, I know that they, they knocked off Medfield High School as well. Mm-hmm. In Which earlier. is a very good lacrosse program. Yeah, a very good team. They've got a lot of state titles. Um, so Concord Carlisle just was – they were a bunch of killers that last year with a bunch of top guys. But how did, how did that game go down against Concord Carlisle? Um, it, it, was, it was a tough game. It was definitely a tough game. Uh, they, like you just said, they were a bunch of monsters, and they were, they were really, really good. It, absolutely. And similar question about hockey. Who are some of the guys to look out for on the lacrosse team coming up this year? Um, Colin Birch again, he's our Fogo. Um, and then <coughs> trying to think here, Ronan Fahey, uh, Dave Pacella. So yeah, we, we're definitely gonna have a solid team as well. What position do you play in Lax? Um, I play defensive midi. Defensive midi. Um, and that's definitely a lot of running, a lot of riding hips. What's, what's your style like as a D midi? Uh, what do you mean? Um, you know, are you a guy that's more aggressive to the ball? Do you kind of hang off of it? Are you, you know, do you use your speed against guys, your strength? You know, how, how do you play the D midi position? Uh, definitely aggression, um, which, you know, comes back to football as well. Just running with the guys, um, being aggressive, going for the ball, being able to get it in the sticks of our offensive guys who can put the ball away. You think you're an angry guy? Some some say I'm angry. <laughs> Corey, do you think he's angry? <laughs> um, after watching a few of the games we played this year, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love that man. <clears throat> I love that answer. Um, talk a little bit about the the team. Have you guys have you guys gotten close this year throughout it all? I know you guys are juniors. Is it? Are there any seniors you want to shout out? You know, this coming up this Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah. Um. Definitely shout out to two of our captains, um, Tucker Hazel, who went down with a knee injury in the Nada game, uh, and then Will Domino, who broke his collarbone the last regular season of the game. And then our third captain, TJ Farrell, those were um, our three senior captains, great kids, um, really helped keep the team together. Mm -hmm. It was a uh, great bond we had. Everyone loved playing with each other, keeping each other up. Every day at practice, every game, it was always a fun time. Yeah. And the good thing, I think the good thing about our team was, you know, Will, Tucker, and TJ did a phenomenal job as captains. But at the same time, all those seniors were, you know, just as much as captains. They, you know, 
pushing us. We were pushing them. It was just a real tight bond. Wow. So tell me a little bit about the coaches you guys touched on earlier said um, they were it's an amazing coaching staff over there at Walpole. I'd love to hear just sort of about the the coaching staff and how their style of leadership is and how they like to communicate with you guys and how they like to win games. We're uh, very fortunate to have a former NFL player, Todd Collins, who went to Walpole High himself. He's our offensive coordinator. His son's one of our receivers. He's a great coach, knows a lot about the game. Um, really smart, knows what plays to call, what how to read a defense. It's just very helpful um, for our offense to have a guy like that in the mix and um, just makes things easier, easier to learn, um, helps our offense run. It's just a, a very beneficial part of the game. Yeah, and then our, uh, for defensive side, uh, Coach Beatty, he's awesome. He's been in the program. He played there uh, for Walpole High as well back when he was in high school. Um, he does an awesome job preparing us, getting us ready, getting us hyped up for the games. Mm -hmm. And another huge part, I think, is how all of our coaches played through the same program, Walpole High. And that's another part about um, all the heart that they have and, and helps translate that to us. And that's another huge part of the game. Mm -hmm. I think Coach Sell did a really good job of getting, you know, just making us a family and, you know, making everybody want to play for each other. We all push each other. And that's what, you, you know, you have to do as a coach is make everybody feel part of a family and, you know, like they, you know, belong there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like you guys um, pointing out how important and cool it is to have guys that were in the program before come back and coach and that they have that respect for Walpole football. Um, does, does Walpole football have any traditions that you guys do every year? Um, you know, maybe whether it's around Thanksgiving time or, or things that the coaches have carried on. Yeah, definitely. Um, before every game, we usually have a team dinner, whether it's the, all the starters, all the seniors, um, just another thing with bonding, just, the night before the game, they'd all eat dinner together. Um, that helped with just coming together as a team. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any, um, you know, going into Weymouth, is there any bad blood there? Obviously, it's a town rival. I know personally a lot of – I went to Dover Sherburn High School, and a lot of the DS kids really hate Medfield. Do you guys have hatred for Walpole or at least Walpole football? Or sorry – no, that's the exact opposite. Do you have any hatred for Weymouth football? Obviously, you don't hate Walpole football. Do you have any hatred for Weymouth? Uh, no, I don't think so. I, I, don't, I don't think we hate. We don't really hate much teams. You know, we just want to go out there and compete at the highest level that we can and, you know, try and pull out a win. Yeah, has this um, – have you guys been growing up sort of watching this rivalry on every Thanksgiving? Is that how, kind of how you guys see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Corey, what are some of the unique challenges you face as a high school quarterback? You know what I mean? It's Friday Night Lights. The whole town's watching you. Um, just describe what playing that position is like and what things I'd you say need. it was definitely a tough adjustment um, with the whole COVID, um, COVID and everything last season. Uh, this year as a junior was my first start. So a lot of nerves, very anxious every game. But um, I'd say just as soon as the game started, knowing that knowing the whole team had my back, all the coaches, just as soon as the game would start, be more relaxed and um, just having fun out there. Andrew, how would you describe Corey's play style as a quarterback? Uh, it's fun to watch. He, he's he's magical. He just makes plays. Um, he he can take off if he needs to. He can throw a strike down the field. It's it's just fun to watch. Corey, how would you describe Andrew as a running back? I'd say makes lots of linebackers nervous, can make <laughs> any cut he needs to to get through the O-line and then open field to either make a guy miss or run him over. And do you like running people over? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. I definitely do. Yeah, three three seasons. Uh, some people, they call it a contact sport, but I feel like it's a collision sport because the way you fucking hit people is that, – that's <laughs> not contact. Contact is too in touch, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to, to backpedal a little bit and um, hear about some more of the highlights of the season. The Needham game, 27 to nothing win, you know, crazy dominant game. How did that go down? Why were you guys, you know, able to impose your will so much on Needham? 
Uh, we, we just, like every game, we went in very well prepared, um, ready to go. And then uh, I think, did we open the game with a touchdown? Um, yeah, we did. Yeah. And I then, yeah. And then we had a blocked punt, which, and then we went up quick. We went up two scores quick. And then from there, it was just momentum. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Was, is Needham not, you know, how would you compare this Needham team to Needham teams you've seen in the past? I mean, it, it's tough because we didn't get to play Needham last year mm -hmm. um, during that COVID year. So this was kind of like our first time really being able to play against Needham. I'd say not a lot of depth, a few skill players here and there, but overall pretty tough team, hard hitters. You don't definitely don't want to take them lightly or underestimate them. Right, absolutely. Beyond Weymouth, do you guys have any uh, Bay State like rivals? Because I was curious to ask about that, you know. Are there teams that you're like, oh, I don't play you on Thanksgiving, but I still get really fired up to play this game? Um, I think... I think after what happened uh, in Natick, I think definitely we want another crack at them. Um, it was such a close game and came right down to the wire. We hadn't beaten them in five years, six years now. Five or six years. Yeah, yeah. so, you know, we definitely want to change that and be able to pull out a victory against them. And then same with Milton. Milton's a team you played up, played um, in youth growing up with. And um, it was another close game. Came down to the last few seconds. They hit a field goal, three-point game. A play here or there would have been a totally different game. So that's yeah. another game we want to get back. Yeah, the Milton score was 10-7 for anyone that couldn't get a ticket. Um, did you guys play at Natick or did you play? Yeah, we did. We were in Natick. Was that, I mean, that environment is sort of legendary, you know, for the, they come out in droves, they make, they come and they bring noise and energy. It's a football town. They've got Doug Flutie, Troy Flutie dancing around on the sideline. Was, was it hard to play in that environment? Uh, I, I don't think so. I think it's fun. I think, you know, towns that bring a bunch of people in are high energy. It's always fun to play there. Yeah. They had a huge student section, huge crowd. It was definitely a loud game. But um, once you once you started, once you're locked in, it's just playing football from there. Yeah. Do you think they had the um the biggest crowd that you've seen all year, or was there another game where there was a bigger crowd? I, I think yeah, I think definitely so needed. Mm. We we definitely had a couple big crowds come out this year, though. Yeah, for which which games stick out to you? Um, Natick was a big one for us. Um, <coughs> was Milton, which was the uh, first game. game? That was Brookline. 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 We had a good crowd at Brookline. Um, Milton, we did too, as well. Most of our home games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If there was a game that, you know, wasn't on your schedule, that there's a team that you would have liked to have played, who would it be? I mean, I would you say Norwood, really yeah. but we got, we got them in that <laughs> Constellation game, which was fun. Maybe North Attleboro. They're a really good team. Always hear about them. Don't play them often. Just uh, a lot of good skill players. We've heard that'd be a fun game to play. Yeah, I'd say I'd say North and maybe KP because we do um, in the summer we do a uh, Bay camp. State yeah, camp. we do camps with base. Um, sorry, with KP and we get close with even that those that team and those guys. So um, being able to line up against them and hit each other would be pretty fun. Good competition. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's, you know, KP has been really going off this year. Have you guys been keeping up with, you know, some of the other divisions and just seeing how everyone's doing? Are there any teams that, like, I'd love to hear some predictions if you guys think you know, like, what team might win D1 or D2 or D3 for the state championship? Yeah, I, I think um, CM's going all the way. That's they're really a powerhouse. I'd say that's a safe bet. Great yeah. recruiters. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if they're recruiting. Uh, but I, I think, don't they have in their middle school, they can bring people in or something like that. They can, um, like, they can recruit for middle school and then the guys are already there and play high school ball. That's just from what I've heard. I'm not 100% sure, but. Yeah. yeah. I'll leave it to the MIA, I guess. But I think CM yeah. is definitely a good pick because they absolutely, they dismantled Zvarian, who is yeah. you know, supposed to be a giant. And the way they just picked them apart. My little brother actually went to that game just to check it out. Um, and so he said, CM is absolutely the real deal in, um, in D2, for sure. Yeah, I went to that game with um, a few teammates. It was a close game for, I want to say, the first quarter, a little bit into the second quarter, and then 
uh, CM's offense just took over. What did you see from CM that you think makes him? Yeah, like what makes CM so much dominant over a team that's like Zavarian, that's supposed to be like really hard to beat? I'd say their depth, definitely. They have skill player after skill player. Just one player gets tired, another player just as good will go in and they'll just run a play right at you and beat you. Absolutely. How about D1? Have you guys kept up with D1 at all? Um, not too, too much. I've seen a bunch of highlights. I've seen Franklin. Franklin looks very, very good. Um, St. John's Prep as well. Yeah, you got Franklin with uh, Jared Arnone, the quarterback. He's a stud. Their Metro West is writing all these articles about him, so I've definitely seen a lot of hype on them. And then um, um, what, what was it? Oh, what was the team? Central? You got Springfield Central. I think, are they still in? Springfield played Severian, I want to say yesterday. I'm not sure who won. Okay. Yeah, that's, and then that's going on. And then um, as far as D3, do you guys know anything about them? Um, yeah. Um, I think Marblehead just won. They beat Mask and Omit. Mm-hmm. Um, they look like they have a pretty good team. That, North was, that, Bro. was that good to see after Maskinomic got you guys that they got knocked out? Or is it, or is it, or yeah. is it different to them? It's a little frustrating because we know a few plays here and there, like a lot of our losses, um, we could have won that game. We definitely would have had a shot against Marblehead. And also another thing that doesn't help was the injuries were really tough to um, battle with this year. Mm-hmm. So losing a lot of key players really um, – made caused um a lot of young players to step up which helped out but um again it was tough to win that game and play that game yeah what did you see out of um and now i can't even pronounce the town name what did you see out of mrhs um (laughs) we we had offense (laughs) um they just kind of ran it up the gut all game just a lot hard running team. Yeah, they 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 reminded me of our team. Um, you know, tough, hard nosed workers, and it was it was a war. It was definitely a war. Wow. Uh, it, do you think you guys could like get closer for like two seconds and just smile? I need a thumbnail. Like like let me see some teeth. Like let me see some teeth. Got it. There it is. Perfect. Now I've got a good thumbnail. All I have to do is I got to smile. Oh, that looks terrible. All right, there we go. So that'll be a, that'll be a good thumbnail. I got to remember to get that. Um, what what are you guys uh, thinking you'll see next year out of the Bay State? And I ask you guys this because it's something I wouldn't be as well versed on. Like, what teams are graduating a lot of guys? What teams are going to remain strong? Obviously, you mentioned um, wanting to get another crack at, um, Natick and, and Milton. Do you guys think that they'll return with strength? You know, what does the Bay state league landscape look like next year? Um, I think that's why the Bay state's so good. It's just because there's always kids coming up, you know, whether kids are graduating teams are always remaining very, very good. So, um, I think it's going to be another, um, another bunch of tough teams again. Um, but it'll be fun. It'll definitely be fun. But I'd say um, Milton and Natick are definitely graduating. A few kids, a few key players. But I think Milton will, I mean, Wellesley will remain strong. They have a lot of key players in our grade and the grade below. So they'll definitely be a tough team to play next year. You guys, Do you guys have any aspirations to play college sports? Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, would it be... I mean, you guys play like a million sports, like five sports between you guys. Is there is there one in particular where you think you'd have the best chance or that you'd want to play the most, you know, you have the most desire to play in? Uh, well, for me, football is my passion. So we'll see where that takes, man. And um, it's really close between football and baseball for me. But um, I'd say whichever I can take further, maybe baseball. Mm-hmm. Still deciding, though. One thing I hear a lot in interviews talking to these high school kids is that um, even during football season, there might be, you know, captain's practices or off-season training. Have you guys just been completely football since the start of uh, summer training? Or has there been anything like, hey, dude, come, you know, play wall ball and twiddle around the stick for an hour or something? You know, have you guys been doing any work to, you know, stay sharp for the other sports or has it just been all football? Well, for me, like, 
definitely it's football is very time consuming. Um, so it's a lot of football, but you know, when I get time off here and there, I try to, you know, get out on the ice or stick handle in the driveway or, you know, walk around the house with a lacrosse stick. Mm -hmm. Is there out of those, you know, three sports, hockey, lacrosse, and football, where do you think the most shit talking happens? What sport is there just the most garbage going on on the field? I don't know. But I'd say all three of those is definitely a ton, probably the most out of all uh, the sports. But I might go with hockey. I might mm -hmm. go with hockey. Definitely depends on the team you're playing to. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. What are some of the What are some of the hockey insults? Bender. You know. <laughs> like you. Dust. Duster. Duster. What is a duster? Yeah. You just you, yeah, you're just you're just dusty. <laughs> How about lacrosse? Oh, lacrosse has like a million slang terms. I don't know if it carries. I'm sure it does. Yeah, I can't. I it, to be honest, I can't even keep up with some of them. Yeah, they um, you know, it's I, a whole different language. The Dover Sherbin lacrosse kids, they, you know, everything became. It wasn't Subway. It was Sendway. It wasn't Friendlies. It was Sendlies. You know, it was, you know, that was just you know everyone my mom's a hater if she doesn't think that they're going to take the tilly or the ship or whatever this year <laughs> you know that's that's how my brother talks i guess but is there is there a lot of that similar slang or is it just with like arrogant ds kids no no 100 percent. It, it's it's with both of those sports it's with everything i i don't even know how it starts or what some of them even mean to be honest with you <laughs> it's like a foreign language or something yeah it, Get pretty much yeah credits or something man. is it um do you guys ever you know are you guys big shit talkers or not so much not really i i like to you know just let my game show right does Talk anyone ever way. does anyone ever get under your skin and then you have to like say something back um for me i i definitely people have definitely gotten under my skin but i'm just the cats fly over no way um, that's sick. Yeah. but um does it always people, come over does it always come over where you guys are at like every yeah Sunday? It, yeah we live right next to the stadium so oh that's pretty cool yeah but um no people definitely got under my skin uh i don't really like to talk i just try and hit them a little harder yeah letting um letting your game show like after someone's talking trash all game making a big play or scoring a touchdown really it's really satisfying to just let your game show. Who's the physically strongest guy on the team? Physically strongest? Uh, I'd say we have a couple. Um, we have a few uh, really big players. We have um, a couple of six, 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 seven tight end, D end receiver. Um, Jesus, we we got a lot of strong players. I don't even I don't even know yeah. who's the strongest. Maybe one of our linemen, like Matt Florio Sousa, big kid, tough kid, strong kid. Like what? Like what does um, he squat? Kind of bench around, if you had to guess. Bench is probably high two hundred squats, probably four hundreds. Yeah, I I don't know the exact numbers, but it's a lot more than me. Yeah, a lot more than me. <laughs> Who's the most emotionally strong on the team? Emotionally strong. <laughs> what do you mean by like keeping it together? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. I don't really know. I think that's what makes our team special. Like, like, we play. like who can take adversity? Oh, who can take adversity? Definitely to a couple of our captains, either Will Dom or um, Tucker Hazel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think I think for those two guys especially, um, you know, being captains and then going down with injuries like that and just still being there, being a leader and being, you know, present for our team, you know, it's being strong, emotionally strong for our team because it's something that nobody wants to have to deal with. Right. And you guys, I mean, the injuries, as far as like the sports you guys play, you know, even baseball, you, you're at catcher, you got this bat swinging fucking 90 miles an hour right near your face. Yeah. Have you guys had to, you know, you talked a little bit about your knee injury, Corey, but have you guys faced any other, you know, serious injuries in your high school career? Or have you been lucky with that? Knock on wood, no. Yeah, I know. Um, I get to know <laughs> yeah, football's a tough sport. A uh, little like, hand finger injury ankle sprain um here and there but nothing too difficult to um play through definitely 
you guys have a good trainer that tapes you up and stuff yeah yeah very fortunate to have um the trainer we have her name's amanda very helpful definitely yeah. all trainers go by first names uh, my trainer in high school, <laughs> my trainer in high school is Tanya. It's like the only adult in the whole building. But for whatever reason, like if someone's going to be like, you know, if you're going to be like crying, getting walked off the field or something, you better know that person's first name. You're not just yeah, like, oh, that's true. Yeah. Mr. Whoever, you know, Mr. Whoever, thanks for your help. You know, you got to know who it is. Or if you fucking gets like when someone gets fucking hurt too, the thing is when the coaches and the players is like go and they need to find the trainer like ASAP, you need to know their name. You're not yeah, gonna, yeah, you you're just not gonna hear the, you hear the echo down the sideline. Yeah. <laughs> you, get over here, Amanda. Like, you know, just yeah. on that, absolutely. Do you um do you practice at like Chase Arena and Natick, or where do you guys practice for hockey? Uh we practice at Robin. Where is that? Is that in Walpole? Yeah, it's, it's right in Walpole. It's on Route One, it's right off Route One. Oh, that's super, that's super helpful for sure. Yeah. How you know. What makes Walpole unique as a town, if you had to describe it to someone that, you know, doesn't really know a ton about it? Um, I'd say I think just the town loves sports. It's a very sport town. Um, very um, historical. Lots of good teams in the past, good players. You know, we touched on hockey, lacrosse, baseball, and football, but what other sports are big at Walpole? And, you know, we should expect a big season out of. Definitely field hockey. Yeah, they're making a run right now. Um, they just made it to the Final Four. Um, who else? I think basketball, basketball, they got a new coach coming in. Um, they should be good this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, we, we, I, think, I think Walpole itself has lots of good teams, lots of teams that, you know, need to be on people's radars. Right. Have you guys been going to the field hockey games or are you too cool? Uh, no, we do. Uh, sometimes it's hard just because our schedule's um, conflict. Yeah. But, um, like, they played Newton last um, Tuesday, I want to say. Mm -hmm. um, so, right after practice, we hopped in the stands. And um, Flano got a video of the game. And it was just the whole football team in the same yeah. set. There you go. Them on. Yeah. I love that, man. I love that. Yeah. Certified Flano. He'll, he'll find you, man, if you're there. <laughs> um, who are some of the better players on the field hockey team? And I've, I've actually heard about it, too. I mean, I'm from Sherburne, but I've heard about – you know, Walpole field hockey. Who are some of the better players and what do you think makes the program so strong? Um, I think definitely their goalie. They have a really good goalie. Only let up um only let up maybe four. I don't I don't know the exact number, but not a lot of goals in a lot of games. So their goalie's a really good player. That's very helpful for their team. Mm -hmm. Um strong defense. Mm -hmm. Goal scorers. I think I think they got a lot of depth. A lot of depth. Um, Caroline Whale and Justice Sony, um, a few key players, senior captains for them. Yeah, what other what other teams are strong in like the winter and spring that we haven't got a chance to acknowledge? Um, Talked about basketball. But, yeah, I touched upon that a little bit. Um, I know they have a new coach coming in, so they have high hopes going into that season as well. They have a pretty um experienced team, lots of players who are going to be seniors now who've been in the program for a while. Ryan King, TJ Farrell, uh, a few tall guys. They should um, have a good chance this year. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys could play one sport, because you're kind of like obviously busy, you know, two out of the three for Corey, three out of three for Andrew. But I was a kid just like you guys. I fucking love sports in high school. And I was always like, man, I wish I had like seven seasons a year so I could play everything. If you could play one more sport, what would it be that you don't get a chance to play right now because you're busy? One more? Yeah. I'd say maybe lacrosse for me. I um, played lacrosse from second to seventh grade. It was because um, back when you could play two spring sports, I played both baseball and lacrosse, and uh, lacrosse was really fun, just being able to run around. Uh, and for me, it's – okay. For me, I would say basketball, but I'm not good at basketball. <laughs> like, like if, if basketball was like, if it was like low hoop, like if the hoop was at like eight feet, then I'd be pretty good. But 10 feet, no. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Man, I, I'm getting fantasy updates now. You know, when it turns one o'clock and all of a sudden you're getting updates, Jonathan Taylor, yeah. you play. He's great. I have Robert Woods, though, who just went down with an ACL. I have him too. Yeah. I do too. You know? yeah. 
what the hell, Bobby? I'm in a dynasty league too, so you get to keep the player forever. So he's 28. So I was like, okay, well, at least he's not like DK. I have DK who's like 22. You know what I mean? You yeah. guys, do you guys play with your teammates? Who do you guys play fantasy with? Your family, your friends? Uh, we have a couple leagues with our friends. We have one big league. Was it 20 then? I think yeah. there's 20 kids on our football team that have a league, which is like the craziest league I've ever been in. Yeah. So. Wow. What, how do you how do you fill a roster with 20, 20 teams? With a bunch of people that you've never heard of. We, um, <laughs> we had a team dinner at the beginning of the year at Jake and Joe's, and a, one random kid just said, yeah, let's make a fantasy team. And during the dinner, everyone's drafted, and it got out of hand really quickly. <laughs> how did it get out of hand? Just kids, um, like, arguing, running out of players to draft. Um <laughs> everyone realizing maybe it wasn't the best idea yeah with 20 with 20 people it's you end up taking a third string and have them as you rb2 <laughs> it's crazy too is like once once you pull like you know you bring the cat out of the bag so to speak it's like all of a sudden like with everyone there you probably couldn't have just said oh no like we're only gonna have 12 guys like the rest of you can fuck off you know like <laughs> you just can't do that well we all thought it was gonna be a fun idea to just do 20 people too do <laughs> you still set your lineup for that league i have a i'm in a league with some of my buddies uh here at college and we were hanging out last night and all of a sudden they're like dan you're in first place in the league i was like am i <laughs> and the other guy goes there goes yeah you gotta get roster and the other guy who actually plays in the league goes because i'm in first place in my division too and he goes but it's only because i i don't have a good team i just set my lineup and no one else does yeah fall apart like that if i i could recommend one thing to you guys it would be definitely start a dynasty league i have one with my high school buddies uh there's 12 of us and it, what you do is you draft the first year like an auction draft and then you just hold on to your players and it, we got the idea because one of our uh, friend's dad did it in college and now he's like in his 50s and he's still playing with his friends so it's a nice way to like keep everyone in touch and then you just make the prize money enough that it'll actually keep you like need to be involved in that yeah yeah no, that sounds fun mm -hmm. but that's do you ever if you if there was um a fantasy draft in the bay state league and you counted up everyone's you know rushing yards and and throws passing yards and everything every week who do you think some of the highest uh point scores would be in the bay state uh i don't know that's a good question but i'd take him as my quarterback <laughs> like that pretty good uh one of our coaches was saying i had a pretty good fantasy um day yesterday yeah, what were your stats? Um, five touchdowns, two on the ground, three in the air. Jesus um, Christ. Good amount of rushing yards. How does that how does that but, feel, um how does that feel to do that and to tear it up in front of everyone like that? Do you feel like a god? Do you feel like um, better than other people or just like all oh, this <laughs> is cool? It was definitely fun because uh coaches were hyping up the game all week, saying a bunch of Norwood alumni were talking trash. They get a pretty good crowd. It was just fun to win it for um for them, for our team, be able to beat the rival. What yeah, were they saying? Definitely... They were talking – why were they talking trash? The Norwood alumni? Walpole Norwood. Yeah. It's gone back forever and ever. <laughs> Huge rivalry. Yeah. So was th that kind of got stripped from you guys when they went to the TVL. That was like a historic rivalry. Mm-hmm. Did I, you know, I can't even remember why they moved. Was it their school enrollment was going down to the point it just didn't make sense to be in a competitive league like the Bay State? Like, do you remember why they left? Um, I'm not too sure why. I don't really know. They were running scared, man. They saw they saw about you guys. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, let me see where we're I at. I know they definitely had a few key players from um, youth who left, so might have been um, not enough players on the team, but I'm not too sure. Right. I mean, it was for every sport, though, too. So yeah. it must have been something a little bit more. Yeah. Um, my, one of my favorite questions to ask is, is this one, which I'll hit you with now. Um, what is the biggest misconception about you, Corey? And what's the biggest misconception about you, Andrew, as a player or as a person in life? What do you guys think the biggest misconception is about yourselves? I missed that. Um. As a player, I'd definitely say um, maybe for, like, other teams, the more and more they watch film, they'd see maybe me as a runner, but I could also throw, definitely. And um, so as a person, 
Um, just humble, definitely confident, but I like to let my game show and um, just team player, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, I'd say uh, people perceive me as angry. I'm not always that <laughs> angry, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just say maybe people don't know how much work goes into your hair. That could be one. <laughs> <laughs> what would your guys' advice be to a little kid that's, you know, running around under the bleachers on Friday night that wants to be the next big starter varsity guy at Walpole High School? What would your advice be to that kid to, you know, what does he need to do to to get where you guys are at right now? Um, I would say that, you know, whether it's, like not just football itself. I'll just say as a little kid, play every sport you can, do everything. Yeah. Um, and find out what you love the most. And once you find that, you know, pursue that. Don't get distracted. Keep um keep your dreams, keep um your goals in mind and stick to it. Absolutely. Corey and Andrew, thank you so much for appearing <clears throat> on the Young Shakespeare podcast. Thank you for having us. Thank it was you. a pleasure. That has been this episode of the Young Shakespeare Podcast. Um, please drop a like and subscribe and tune in for the next episode. Huge thanks to Corey and Andrew for coming on.